don't pit scripture against scripture. Instead, pair scripture with scripture. You see, many times people make a mistake by taking one scripture to nullify another passage. Usually, they, there's a scripture that they like, but there's other passages they don't like, but they'll just ignore the other passages and say, well, this passage says this, therefore they're pitting it against that and therefore wanting to override it. But friend, that's bad Bible uh, hermeneutics. Instead, what we ought to do is take this scripture and that scripture and recognize that scripture's true, this scripture's true, so how do we pair it together? Well, they contradict each other. You, no, no, no. You, it, it, it's only because in your mind, you favor one scripture over another. That's why you think it contradicts. But rather, you recognize they're both true. So I'm not gonna take one against another. Let me give you some examples. You hear people say, Jesus said, don't judge one another. So why do you preachers judge? And then they mention politically favored sins <laughs> that they're tired of preachers condemning. And they say, you can't condemn that. Jesus said, don't judge. Well, wait a minute. The same Bible that says don't judge, Jesus himself talks about many different types of behavior and sins that are wrong. The New Testament and the apostles deal with it too. In fact, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6 and mentions many different sins. And he mentions one of them that are politically favored and says, if they practice that, they won't inherit the kingdom. What is Paul doing? Judging? What is Jesus doing on the Sermon on the Mount? Judging? See, you can't simply take one statement of Christ and then nullify everything else in the Bible. People do this all the time. Seventh-day Adventists make this mistake. They'll take the passage about keeping the Sabbath, and then they don't want to take it and pair it with what Jesus said. Jesus said, the Sabbath was not made for God, but made for you. He talks about priests breaking the Sabbath all the time. He himself was accused of breaking it. His disciples were accused of breaking it. Nowhere does Jesus affirm keeping it in the way that Seventh-day Adventists want to keep it. But yet, what do they do? They take the, the commandment on the Sabbath and nullify what Jesus said instead of pairing it. They, they ignore what Paul says, that the festivals and the Sabbaths are just shadows and the reality is in Christ. But see, they don't want to take that and pair it with other scriptures. People do that with speaking in tongues. I, I see somebody will say, well, the first time speaking in tongues was mentioned, the people understood it, therefore, Speaking in tongues is preaching in a known language. I've heard that. Yet what are you going to do with 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, where, where Paul says, He that speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. What are you going to do with that? Well, blah, blah, blah. See, no, no, no. Pair it together. They all make sense when you pair them together rather than taking one to contradict another. See, you've got to stop doing this, my brothers and sisters, because that's bad Bible hermeneutics. And what we want to do is be solid in our herm hermeneutics. I'll give you one last example, tithing and free will offerings. I hear people say, tithing's been abolished. Even though Jesus said to do it, even though the New Testament mentions it, they'll say, but Paul wrote that we ought to give free will offerings and they'll take 2 Corinthians 9 and nullify Galatians 6, nullify Matthew 23, 23, because they think that passage nullifies everything else that is said about tithing. There it is. They're taking one scripture to pit it against another. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's bad hermeneutics. So we got to learn to take scriptures and pair it together. One last one. I, I, I got a little time. One more last one. The Jesus only. They'll say, they'll do scriptures that affirm the di divinity of Christ. And I believe that Jesus is God. But then they'll say, since he's God, he has to be the father. Where does it say that? Well, Isaiah says he's going to be the, you know, wonderful father. I get that part. But what are you going to do with the baptism of Jesus, where the father speaks from heaven, the Holy Spirit descends as a dove, and Jesus is baptized? all three existing together. How are you going to understand that? Well, Acts chapter two, we're supposed to baptize in Jesus' name only. Peter didn't say in Jesus' name only, but he did say we're to baptize in Jesus' name. And I do that every baptism. You know why? Because Jesus commanded baptism and therefore every time I baptize, I'm doing it because of his authority.
But how did he tell us to do it? Baptize, Matthew 28, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He, he's affirming the Trinity for the new converts. He's trying to stress that there's one God revealed in three eternal persons. But the Jesus only, they take one scripture, Acts 2, and nullify Matthew 28. Bad hermeneutics, my brothers and sisters. So listen, do not pit one scripture against another. Because what you're doing is you're taking a truth of scripture and you're making it the whole truth. And when you do this, you've turned the truth into a half truth. And that's the problem because you're not looking at the entire word of God to develop a belief, a doctrine. This is why I win almost, I win every debate that I'm enter into because I'm always going to affirm all the scriptures. So when you throw out a verse, I'm going to say, yes, I agree with that. I'm not going to fight it. And I'm just going to simply take that scripture and pair it with other scriptures to give us a better understanding. So friend, start learning to pair scripture with other scripture and not pit it. Fight with one scripture against another. Stop doing this and you'll be better in understanding the full truth of God.